All right, release planning. Why do we do release planning? It is a great opportunity to get the entire team, including the VPs, the product owners, the developers, everyone in the team, testers, documentation, um, support people, all to collaborate together to decide on a plan, decide on the process before moving forward into the next release. This is the day to take that opportunity and make a plan. So as a Scrum Master for Rally, I facilitate the release planning meeting. Um, the key to having a smooth release planning meeting is preparation. So there takes a lot of effort into the preparation for release planning. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons over the years and some of the steps that I take to prepare for release planning meeting is first of all doing a retrospective with the team. So we'll definitely talk about um, our lessons learned from the previous release um, and then take actions on what will help us improve for the next release. A lot of those ideas and things that we talk about will become action items and then we follow up with them in the next release. Sometimes those items become backlog items as well. Um, the next thing we also do is talk about teams. So what is the shape of the teams? How many teams are we going to have? Who's going to be in those teams? This is most important because the next step will be the backlog grooming session and in that session the teams need to be talking to each other and talking about the backlog. So um, as soon as we decide what the teams will look like for the next release, that really helps us. The purpose of the backlog grooming session is for the entire team to talk about the backlog and to look at the details of each of the stories to make sure that the entire team is clear on what is going to happen for the release and the upcoming release. This is a great opportunity for the team to talk about each story. They look at each story, talk about the details, maybe discuss risks, dependencies, and then ultimately provide the product owner with a high level estimate. At the end of the backlog grooming session, then the product owner should have a list of stories that are clear, the team is clear on what is going to be happening for the next release, and the product owner can move forward then with prioritizing the backlog. The agenda is an important piece to keeping the day organized. Um, after several years of doing this, I have a pretty solid agenda. However, if you're getting started with release planning meetings, I would recommend using Jean Tabaka's Collaboration Explained book. In the uh, back section of the book, there's great examples of agendas for several types of meetings, and that's how I got started. So I would use that. Um, that is an important piece, is getting that agenda ready for the day. You're only gonna have the focus and the attention of the entire team on this one day, so you wanna make sure you take advantage of the time that you have with them and get everything talked about and get everything organized for the next release in this day. All right, and the last thing I think about for release planning is obviously the logistics. So I have to book the room, I have to think about table configuration, um, any of the technical pieces we may need like projectors and computers and power, ordering lunch, keeping people comfortable, and, and making charts. Charts are important. Um, based on the agenda, I pretty much have all the information available on the charts. So on the day of planning, we are ready to go and we can plan away. So now we've talked about how we prepare for planning day. Now let's move into talking about what we do on planning day. On release planning day, together as an entire engineering team, all the teams collectively, we start together and we go through the first half of the agenda. We break out in product line groups and we go through the product line agenda individually, then we reconvene and finish the rest of the agenda together. I generally open the meeting by talking about the purpose of the meeting and reviewing the agenda. The purpose of the meeting is to decide on a plan for the 2010.4 release. Then I move forward on discussing each of the agenda items and have it open for everyone to make a decision on what the day should look like. This sets the expectations for the day and it keeps us organized for the entire meeting. VP of Product Development gives a kickoff which is a, basically a high-level roadmap of what's upcoming for the next release. I generally wouldn't allow this to go longer than 30 minutes, but it's a great high-level view for the entire team. So next is meeting agreements. I've listed all our meeting agreements on this chart. We review the start at the end times. Lunch is generally 11.30, and I usually order it and have it brought in. We define what the breaks are gonna be and talk about our meeting agreements for the day. Generally, ours are no electronics, return on time, and one conversation at once. 
I review these with the team and each team might have their own different agreements that they want to list here. We review the meeting agreements, our time boxes, team members, what our classroom schedule meeting is going to be and any issues and concerns. Again, these I create and ahead of time I have on charts, like we have our meeting agreements and then our time boxes. As I go through each of the agenda items, I bring up the chart, I talk about them, any changes that are required, I document on the chart, and then we move on. It's just important that as we're going through the agenda, the team is on the same page and the team is in agreement. So, after discussing these items, and then given what we know right now, I generally ask the group if there are any other issues and concerns. If there happen to be issues and concerns, prior to going into reviewing the backlog, then we put all those items on our parking lot. What are the prioritized backlog items? At this point, we ask the product owners to come up and present their, their backlogs. They go through each of their stories and give a detailed description of each of them. And then we also encourage the team to ask questions. At this point, we have gone through everything we need to as an entire group. Then we do it a product line breakout. At the breakout, each of the teams will have their own agendas. During the product line breakout, each of the teams will discuss their meeting schedule, team availability, how they're going to handle defects, their definition of done, the metrics that are going to track, and the communication plan. What are our stories, estimates, and mapping across iterations? The team, through the backlog grooming sessions, should have already reviewed the stories and provided a high-level estimate for each of the stories. In doing so, the team should be very familiar with their backlog. So during the release planning meeting, what they're going to want to do is take their stories from the product backlog and move them into the release backlog. In doing so, then they'll know what they're able to do for the release. From there, then they will take each of the stories from the release backlog and map them across iterations. So during this time, while we're planning, what we do is we project Rally on the wall and the team is collectively doing this together. So we're seeing Rally and we're using the tool and we're mapping the stories across each of the iterations. Next, the team will identify any dependencies across Scrum. If they have any dependencies, they document these on stickies and bring them when they reconvene. Finally, each of the teams should have their list of release commitments. When they return to release planning, they're going to present the release commitments to the entire team. Okay, so given what we know right now, I asked the entire team if there are any issues or concerns. So based on the entire agenda that we went through, both together and in the separate breakout groups, what are our issues and concerns? At that time, we discussed all of those issues and concerns and make sure they do not prevent us from our release plan and from moving forward into the next release. Next is looking at the parking lot. So we make sure that we go through all the parking lot items, revisit them, look at them, and deal with any of the issues and clear them out before the meeting has ended. So next I will ask the team what their commitment is to their release plans. This is the absolute last thing we need to ask for the release planning day. So I'll ask their fist to five for their release plans. The last item is a retrospective on the meeting. This is very important in shaping the release planning meeting for the next release. By doing so, I get feedback from the team on what worked well and what didn't work well. And this has really helped our team shape the agenda that it is today. So, the key to having a successful release is really just to follow up on what you agreed upon in the release planning meeting. So, as a Scrum Master, I make sure that I've documented the decisions that the team has made. I schedule all the meetings that they've agreed upon, and in addition, I facilitate those meetings as well. I follow up on the action items that they have decided upon, and I track decisions and dependencies. This is how we do release planning at Rally. It has taken us many years to get to this point. Be patient and have fun, and good luck with your next release planning meeting.